Inuit hunters sled over frozen seas in search of food. It's deep winter in Greenland. Temperatures hover at minus 40 degrees centigrade. Hunters in this part of northern Greenland say they have two families, their wife and kids, and their dogs. In the winter months, it's the dogs who come first. Hunters like these can be away for weeks at a time. The frozen landscape means finding prey isn't always easy. Winter slowly gives way to spring, and the waters are freed up once again. Fishermen can finally take to the seas. Jens de Fischke gathers his nets with his son Arend. He has fished the waters off the Greenlandic coast since the 1960s. The catch has always been plentiful. But the past few years have seen a dramatic change in the lives of fishermen like Jens. European Union fishing vessels were finally allowed into these waters in 1995. It was the beginning of the end for many local fishermen. It's much more difficult now than it used to be. It's hard to survive as a fisherman now. I only became a fisherman because I had to. We could make a living out of it back when I started. But not now. Before I became a fisherman, I used to work on the land as a builder. But then I injured my eyes in an accident. So now, here I am. Now, Jens and his fellow fishermen are left selling their daily catch in a small market in the capital city, Nook. They can't compete with the giant fishing trawlers. Where once Jens comfortably provided for his family, he now struggles to make a living. It's not the first time that mainland Europe has interfered with Inuit life. A former Danish colony, Greenland was given autonomy in 1953. These huge cement housing blocks were built to accommodate Inuits who were now effectively given full Danish citizenship. It was part of a plan to turn Greenland into a modern welfare state. The plan had disastrous results. Every day sees groups of men hanging around in the city center drinking. Hunters and fishermen from remote interior villages were moved into the new housing developments. Suddenly men who had lived in the outdoors all their lives had free housing and a monthly welfare check. Many turned to drink. Charlotte Jürgensen lives on the outskirts of the city in a hostel run by the Red Cross. An abusive relationship ended when her partner shot part of her leg off. He was a drunk. Now, the 29-year-old is rebuilding her life here with her young children. She, too, was an alcoholic, and the family was taken in by the organization after living rough for a number of months. Now they are part of a project that aims not only to dry out alcoholics, but also to rebuild the relationship between parents and children. It's been a lifesaver for Charlotte. I think men drink more because they don't have any strong words. Or us women, we come with words. We dare express ourselves. Men, they don't dare say anything. We women, we are strong with words. The men, they are strong with their fists. And then they drink more to be able to cope with day-to-day -day life. A boat carefully makes its way through icebergs outside North. The skipper is Hans Wickman. Hans runs the refuge that is taken in Charlotte, the Red Cross home for young children and families. Today, he's taking supplies to Kormok Island. Though it's only 70 kilometers from Nork, the treacherous journey takes over four hours. Kormok acts as the second base for the home. It takes in orphaned and abandoned children from all over Greenland. They spend weeks on this remote outcrop in the summer months, fishing, walking, and playing in the outdoors. 
Most of the children here have come from families where they've been physically or sexually abused. Others have had to fend for themselves from an early age, ignored by alcoholic parents. The problem is not a new one in Greenland, but Hans and his staff feel they've noticed a pattern of behavior in Inuit culture. They feel that a sense of identity has been lost, and rampant alcoholism simply reflects this. What's important to Inuit culture is a million miles from the modern European values they're being encouraged to adopt. Hans hopes that they may be heading off the problem for future generations. A child must, must be a child and play like other childs. Um, and that's what we, that's what, uh, that's, that's what we try to do, to show them that it's a world where they're allowed to be children. They're allowed to be children at our place. They're not uh, going to take care of grown-ups. They will soon be grown-ups them, uh, themselves. So um, what's right and what's wrong, that's our primary work. In Komok, the children do everything together. The home becomes the family that most of them have never had. Adults at the center in Nuuk are encouraged to come to Komok to help out. Charlotte is here with her children. The midnight sun is still blazing when the children eventually turn in for the night. But for this long, that doesn't seem to matter. Eighty-eight percent of Greenland's population is Inuit. They've lived in this inhospitable environment for centuries. But the changes that have hit their way of life in the past few decades are arguably the most challenging they've ever had to face. Their culture is deeply concerned with the harmony and balance between the environment and its inhabitants. As the winter months arrive, the seas close up once more, and Greenlanders prepare to face the elements yet again. The Danes have their own name for Nook, Gotha. It translates as good hope. 